Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to St. Bernard Acres channel. I'm uh, sitting here in the gas station and I'm going to do a voiceover on this video uh, to try to lay some things out for you. The purpose is to give you a status of the house build and the cost thus far, what I've put into it and talk about it a little bit. Um, I had brought out, this is from Friday night, I had brought out the new door uh, the front door for the house, um, it came in, and then I have a bunch of 10-foot tuba-sixes to uh, take down to the bottom of the barn that I'm going to use to build the floor for the shed that that company <laughs> shipped to me to uh, build and do a review on. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a busy next weekend, so we're going to do that. Um, the tractor works out great with those forks to help me unload things um, by myself. I didn't have to have Gail out there with me on this one. Although it would have been nice. I would have complained. But I'm going to try to give you, like I said, an update on what's going on with the house. Uh, first off, uh, Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, uh, meeting with the electric company to finalize where I'm putting everything. And to get the invoice from them, uh, because they won't do anything until I pay their invoice. And we're guessing that's going to be somewhere between five or four and five thousand uh, dollars. Today I went by and bought the uh, meter base and 200 amp disconnect and all that kind of stuff, um, so I can have that ready for when they do it. I met with Bobby over the weekend. I, at the end of this video, you'll see some, or during the video, you'll see me brush hogging some of his property where we're going to be digging the trench. That's going to be around the 15th of September. Uh, we'll have the wire all laid in and bring the electric company back out, and they'll hook me all up. So there's the electric, the status of it. Friday, I'm meeting with the soil scientist to determine where I can put the septic system and where I can put the house. Um, he'll tell me, then I'll get the report from him, and I have to give it to the county, and they will design a septic system for me that I can put in and tell me, yes, I can put the house there. Then I can start grading the house, putting the gravel down, and getting it ready for the blocks and the beams. You know, that's, that's about $6,000 all told that I hadn't really factored into this thing. Uh, so <laughs> it might throw me a little bit behind as far as my October build date. I don't know. We're going to figure it all out. But I'm going to go through here now and show you all the material I've bought for the house so far. Because if you remember, the plan is to build a shed. Basically, I'm going to build a 16 by 40 shed to show people that you can build the shed versus buying one or rent to owning one. You can build one cheaper. My goal was to build this entire shed all dried in like you would go to the lot and pick one up. Only a much more substantial build and better quality. Um, that I could do it for ten to $12,000. So let's look at some numbers and see how close I managed to get. Hang on. Alright. The first thing are the beams. Four by six by eight. And most everything is eight foot because that that's all I can carry. You know, I'm doing this one guy trying to do this by himself. But you can see the beams. I need 20 of them. They were 16, 18 each, which came to $323.60. They're sitting in the barn ready to go. Then we have the floor joist sections, about two by two by eights. And I bought them at different times. I needed a total of 90 of them. They were $6.98 each. That ran me $628.20. You saw all the sections are built and sitting in the barn ready to go. 
I also needed 10 foot 2 by 4s for my top and bottom plates. So I bought 24 of those at 378 a piece. Then we have the 2 by 4 studs for all the exterior walls. Um, I needed uh, about 120 of them. I got them for 318 a piece. That means 38160. Those are all in the barn. And we have the subfloor, the OSB. I got five eights, four by eight sheets, uh, 20 sheets that were $24.40 each. So I spent $488 on that. Uh, just delivered those. You guys saw that video last week where I got those. And because I'm doing 16 inches on center on the floor with all the double two by eights because the way I did sections, the five eighths is going to be fine. I did not need three quarter inch tongue and groove because I ain't paying that kind of money. Also, the glue for the subfloor, 10 tubes, 457 a tube, 4570. That was an easy one. And the screws for the subfloor, I bought two boxes, uh, five pounds each. Eighteen seventy nine each, thirty seven fifty eight for the screws. So for the windows, I got five of them at a place called Window Warehouse. They're overruns or, or ones that were ordered that didn't get picked up, things like that. I got five of them for one hundred fifteen dollars each, and then I got two of the same size for the utility room and the bathroom. Those were $109.99 each, and the one for over the kitchen sink was $121. So my total for the windows turned out to be uh, $915.98. All the windows are in the barn. Then about the doors, uh, I've got one back door, uh, a side door. To the utility room and the front door these are all exterior steel doors um, they ran me a total of a thousand twenty two dollars all three of those are in the bar and ready to go so a we box of covered. bales from a nail gun i've gone through one box already that was 35.98 i'm obviously going to have to buy another box of those the house wrap, I got two rolls at $69.99 each for a total of $139.98. So that brings my grand total so far to date of $4,109.34. That's out of my budget of ten dollars to $12,000, which is what I was hoping to be able to dry in the so-called shed with. Um, now that leaves me six to eight thousand dollars. I have to buy the siding, which the last price that I checked was going to be around sixteen hundred dollars for the LP smart siding. The trusses, I need twenty two trusses, they're up to seventy four dollars a piece. So you figure around sixteen hundred dollars for that. And eighteen hundred dollars for all the roofing material. So I'm well under budget. Now I still have to buy the purloins. I have to buy the screws. I have to buy all of the uh, nails and screws for everything else. I mean, I think I'm going to have this dried-in shed that has house wrap and siding and three actual standard size doors, eight windows, uh, everything for the $10,000. And I'm excited to death about that. Now, that doesn't include, that was just the shed part to show people if you have the time and, and the ability to build it yourself versus doing one of these shed to home conversions. Um, it would save a lot of money. And to get a 16 by 40 building, a shed, in this area, you're looking at fourteen to $16,000 for just the shed. If you pay cash for it, if you rent to own it for three or four years, 
then you're well over twenty-three, twenty-five, $26,000, something like that. So there you go. I mean, for $10,000, you could build a really good 10 by or 16 by 40 shell for your house. Now, I'm not including, I still have to buy all the gravel for the foundation. I got to grade it, put the gravel down. I have to buy 96 blocks at two, two bucks a piece. I'm not including that in this, uh, building this shed part. And I'm not including that in the finishing out the inside. Yeah, I'm going to keep doing that and running that total. I just wanted to do the shed for everybody to show them the ones that are thinking, well, let's rent one of these sheds. Well, you know, if you want instant gratification and you want it right now, well, there you go. You work with that. But, you know, if you have the chance, I'm buying this on the fly. I mean, it's whatever I make each month that's extra, I can buy material with because I'm not in a super hurry to get it done. I have the luxury of time on my side. So, and you got to think about all these other things, septic systems, all the tests that have to be done electric if you don't have electric on site i cannot afford to go solar power and get all of the conveniences i want of electricity so i will forego that i'm not worried about i'm not trying to be super green man here you know uh i want all my conveniences of central air and you know all that good stuff. well it won't be central air in that small house but air conditioning washers dryers you know all that kind of stuff uh so yeah i mean that's my little update my status of where things are you know i i i still might be able to do uh the uh october build i don't know yet i have to wait till i get the invoice from the electric company now I, today i bought the meter base disconnect combo thing that was three hundred and nine dollars for that i still have to buy the four by four post and the uh, uh two by sixes to make the thing to mount the meter and everything on i have to furnish all of that i have to buy the pvc sweep to bring it up out of the ground i have to pay for all the trenching uh you know, all those things are adding up, plus whatever the invoice is from the electric company itself, which we're estimating, and he's kind of estimating, between four and $5,000. So, and then the wire to get from the meter onto the property, into the cabin, into the house, that's all on me. Um, so that's not included in all of that. So, yeah, there's a lot of expenses involved in building this house uh, that, again, I mean, I have the luxury of time. If I have to put off the actual assembly of it until spring, I mean, that's what I'll have to do. That'll give me more time to get material for the inside, you know, if nothing else. Uh, and I can get all the framing done for those walls and set them at the same time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll keep you all posted as to how my timeline is working out once I get all this information and get all the money. Now, part of that four to $5,000 that I'm paying the electric company this week, once I have the dried in shell and I have the septic installed and I have a driveway, I get a big chunk of that money back. So they just don't want to spend four or $5,000 to bring power to a camp that's going to use it two weeks out of the year. Once they see it's actually a homestead, then I get that, you know, a big chunk of that money back. So, but that's the cost of doing this kind of stuff. And there are things that you don't think about, you know, uh, when you start getting, because I did not budget $600 for a soil scientist. I didn't budget $500 for a septic system design. You know, I budgeted the permit and I budgeted $2,500 to put the septic in because it's just a small little house, one bedroom, you know, it's one tank. Uh, and I was going off of an estimate from a few years ago before the county changed all their rules 
and put this new plan into play. So this is what we're stuck with. You know, and, and I mentioned in my live stream, if I have to put stuff on credit cards, that's all right. In the spring, when I'm moving out of here, I'm selling the house. So that money from selling the house will pay off whatever debt I incurred by doing this if I have to go into debt. I don't want to. Uh, the idea was selling the house here was we was going to buy, you know, a camper or an RV and do some traveling. But, you know, we got to do what we got to do. So I encourage everyone to look at this. If you're looking to buy some property and build a house on it, these are some of the things you got to think about, some of the things you got to get into. Um, I don't know what else to say. I bored you enough. <laughs> but I did want to give everybody a status on things and let you know some of the costs that I've incurred that I hadn't planned on and what I've actually spent thus far. Because I've been very blessed with my subscribers who have been helping me along the way. Uh, I haven't had to come up with that whole $4,109 on my own. And with their generosity and their help, I'm in a position where I can't. Alex is going to pay uh, half of the electric cost because he's going to be building a house out there. And he's going to need all this stuff anyway. So hopefully he just got his truck paid off. That's $1,500 a week. He's not shelling out anymore for that feeder belt. Uh, hopefully, come the middle of, of, of September, he has his half of the money, and it won't be as much of a burden on me. You know, if I have to pay it all, of course I will, and then Alex can pay me back later. But if he has his half then, it won't hurt me quite as bad. I can go ahead and buy the side and you take it out there. But anyway, that's the fun we're having. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I uh, wasn't too boring for you. Um, now I'm going to get off of here, get this thing uploaded. I got to get it. Uh, everything, you know, I'll do all that kind of stuff and get it uploaded. Uh, hopefully, I'll do one of my chats here. I'm working uh, every night this week. Like I said, uh, Thursday, Wednesday, I'm meeting the electric company out there. Friday, I'm meeting the soil scientist and We'll see what's going on. I'll give you some updates as we go. And anything else that happens that might be, you know, interesting to you, I'll try to let you know. But this is Joe from St. Bernard Acres. Appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, all those kind of things. I'm out, folks. <laughs>